Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Uh, say, say this word with me. Say forgiven. 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 Say, say, say it with me. Say it with me like this. I am forgiven. We just prayed a prayer. Amen. And that prayer is a prayer of salvation, which is us giving our life to God. And then, and then God does something really powerful. He comes and makes a home inside of us. Amen. I think that's so good to think about. If, if, if we really thought about it, you know, uh, what, what kind of home did we make for him in, in our life? I mean, if we really think about it. And I, I want to really dive into this word forgiven a little bit, but I'm going to kind of go uh, around the back side of it a little bit, okay? And we're going to look at a, you're going you're gonna to read these verses to you and you're going to go, what? <laughs> but I want, I want to, the Lord really knows what he's doing. When he gives us a word, when he gives us a sermon, when he gives Pastor Everett a sermon, uh, most of the time I'm like just as baffled as you guys are. When I, I go, I go, really God? Are you sure? Is that really the word for today? And, uh, and I don't know, maybe it's just me and God, but I have this relationship with God where I sometimes will question what he says to me because, you know, I want to make sure it's his voice and and, you know, did you never know that, that to hear the voice of God is really a challenge sometimes? Because I don't know, what, what does the voice of the Lord sound like to you? Because to me, it's always this low, baritone voice, you know. It's like, Pastor Everett. You know, or maybe to you, it's a high voice. I don't know. It's uh, Pastor Everett. Because, yeah. <laughs> and maybe, it's, maybe it sounds like your wife, or maybe it sounds like your husband, or maybe it sounds like uh, a co-worker or or someone that you, that you're, that's in your life. I don't know what your voice sounds like. I don't know how familiar you are with the sound of his voice, but I want you to know that we need to be familiar, amen? We need to get to know him on a, on a really a, a, a more personal way so that we become familiar. Because the only way that you're ever going to change anything in your life, you have to listen to something, amen? There has to be a voice that will speak to you, that will change your mind amen to change your direction you have to change your mind but really it's your heart that that really leads you most of the time we we have a, a sometimes a fight between a heart our heart and our mind but uh, let's let's dig right in here second corinthians 4 verses 6 through 9 and uh we're going to read the first two verses i'm going to pause and then i'm going to read the second two verses and uh, uh we'll, we'll go all right do we find did you, if you have a bible uh, wherever you are. I mean, if you're driving, I, I don't expect you to pull over and, and necessarily open the Word of God, but it would be awesome if you would take a moment and pull over and just open it up on your phone there for a second, and let's just read together. And uh, I think we can form a connection with God and, and really the direction that He wants to take us this morning. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 6 through 9. Here we go. We're going to read together. And I, I like it when you read with your outside voice, if you got one. And, uh, you know, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So we want to hear the Word of God, not just, you know, you know, do that in your mind. You know, that, that little voice in your head that keeps going on that tells you all kinds of things that don't really mean anything. And, that, and most of the time, everything it tells you, you don't ever happens anyways. And so you spend a lot of time thinking and talking to this voice in your head. Really, nothing ever happens that, uh, that it says. That's not the voice that we want to listen to today. We want to listen to the Word of God. We, we stand on the Word of God this morning. 2 Corinthians 4 six and seven and then we'll pause okay you ready real 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 loud for god who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of god in the face of jesus christ but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power of god that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Just pause for a second. Put a pin right there. And I want you to think about something. There's something inside of us that's not of us. Think about that for a minute. The, the, the same God who called light out of darkness, Genesis chapter 1, that same God put something inside of you that's not of you. I want you to think about that for a second. No, the, the next time you think you're not enough, I want you to think about, I want you to think about that. What did God put in me for this moment? What did he put inside of me that, that I'm, I'm not tapping into yet? What, what's inside of me 
that's greater than me? What's, it, what's inside of me that's greater than the circumstance? What's, what's inside of me that's bigger than this disease? What's inside of me that's bigger than this, this uh, COVID-19? What's inside of me that's bigger than whatever it is you're facing? What's inside of me right now? Take a pause sometimes and think about that. That's a good question. Well, that's a good question. That's a really good question. Because often we're full of questions, but no answers. But I'm going to tell you the answer to the question is already in you. Amen. If you're saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, the answer is inside of you. Amen? There's an answer inside of us. Let me just say another statement, okay? What's inside of you doesn't look like what's outside of you. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what's inside of you doesn't look like what's outside of you. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You know, uh, what's outside of you might look ugly, but he's beautiful inside of us, amen? What, what's outside of you might be depressing, but what's inside of you has given you the victory. Amen? We have the victory. Amen? This morning. Let me keep, keep going. Verse 8. Okay? Ready? Verse 8. Together, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Cast down, but not destroyed. I want you to think about those two verses right there. Uh, those two verses talk about the differences between what's in us and what's out of us. What's in us and what's out of us. There's, there should be a difference between what's in you and what's outside of you. Amen? Let me, let me just pray for you for a moment. Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray right now that you touch us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. Father, that you would enlighten, that, the, 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 that, that our understanding would be open, that you'd give us wisdom, that you'd give us courage, Father, to not just hear the word, Father, but let the word into our heart so that we might uh, be changed, Lord, so that we might go out into the world, that we might go back home to our relationships, that we might, might, might go to work and be different and be changed, Father. Lord, that we would not be cast down and left there and forsaken, Father, but we would, we would remember that the strength we have comes from you and you alone. Thank you, Father, for that. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Say this word, forgiven, with me. Forgiven. Forgiven. You know, we all have a need to justify ourselves. Did you ever notice that? We, we always have a need to justify ourselves. We, we, get, we get into circumstances and we look to justify ourselves. We always do. It's like someone said, you ugly, and you say, no, I'm not, I'm not ugly, I'm beautiful. Or they, said, they say, you dumb, and they say, no, I'm not dumb, I'm, I, got a, I got this, I got that, I've got, I got this school, I got this, I'm smart. You know, uh, you know, sometimes people will judge you based on what you do, and they'll look at you and they'll think, well, I don't, I don't really like what you just did, and, you're, and, and so we get judged. But then, then what happens in our life is we, get, we end up walking around uh, forgetting that we're forgiven, amen? So we begin to tell our version of the story. That's what happens. Our, our version of the story is really what, what, what's important because, you know, I, I, I'm guilty of it myself. I'll tell you the story based on my, my perception of the story, but really there's more to the story than what I'm willing to share with you because I want to justify myself. And so forgiveness is not about justifying, okay? It's not about justice. I want, I want to say that right now. Forgiveness is not about justice. Maybe you could say that with me. Forgiveness is not about justice. Okay? Because if you're looking for justice, you're not, gonna, you're not ready to forgive. Because <laughs> forgiveness always costs you something. It costs you giving up something that you hold so dear in your life. Okay? It's something that we, we want to hold on to. It becomes our part of our identity sometimes. And sometimes we, we walk forward uh, with all the baggage of yesterday in our, uh, hanging on our back, and we, we think we're going to do something great for God, and really what we end up doing is making more messes as we go forward. The, the object is not that... Let me, let me just back up for a second. Relationships will always be messy, okay? Our expe my expectation of relationships is that there will be a mess, okay? Somewhere, some way, somehow you're going to offend me, okay? Somewhere, some way, somehow, I will offend you, okay? And that's going to happen, but we have to understand that forgiveness must always come into play, especially when we're Christians, okay? Especially when there's someone in, inside of us 
that has experienced everything we have experienced, okay? So, so relationships will always be messy, okay? Uh, all right, so, so if, if, if my expect, ex expectation is that you're going to offend me, guess what happens? Now I will shrink back from what God has called me to do, right? I will be less than what, I, what God has called me to do in that relationship because I'm expecting you. You see what happened right there? Now I'm, gonna, I'm expecting you to offend me so I will not be real with you, okay? So, so, so what we end up doing is building walls, okay? Walking around in little houses of, uh, or shells. We, we won't come out of our shell because we're afraid, okay? So we, then we begin to live in fear when we really shouldn't be living in fear. First, uh, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, right? God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. So, so we're not of fear, but we walk in fear. Fear of being hurt, being, fear of being misunderstood. We have these fears inside of us which hold us back from being really, truly forgiven. 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 Forgiven should be our identity. Forgiven should be, be who we are as people. Amen? I'm forgiven indeed. I, I, I got I to stop here for a second, and I, I don't want to go too fast, but forgiven indeed. Indeed, the word indeed really just means that what I do demonstrates who I am. Amen? So, so if you're looking for me to be forgiven indeed, I, I means I'm going to walk around without fear, without remorse, re without regret. I'm, I'm going to walk around like, brand, like, like it's a brand new day. Like, I can smile today because I don't have to worry about what happened yesterday. Oh, that sounds really good, Pastor Everett. Uh, see, it looks to me like, uh, Pastor Everett, you're too young because you don't, haven't been through everything I've been through. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I'm almost 55 years old. Not quite yet. I'm not going to quite be there. I'm six months from it. But I'm going to tell you this. I have been through some stuff. I have been through some stuff. And, and my stuff and your stuff, let's that's, that's just have a, let's have a contest. Who's got the worst stuff, okay? Because that's what we want to do. We want to, we want to compare stuff. And that's how we, we choose friends most of the time. We choose friends based on our experiences of what has been in our life. And so we feel comfortable because they align with my pain. They align with my pain. So then I, I have friends that are in the same kind of pain we are, and we just get together and have a party. Amen. But we don't really ever, ever overcome anything because we don't, are not walking out the power that is in us. I serve a God who, who is alive today. My God is not dead. He didn't go into a grave somewhere and just stay there. He got up out of graves. And that means that I should be able to get up out of whatever circumstance that I'm, I'm in and walk like I'm forgiven. I need to walk different. See, why does it matter so much, Pastor Everett? Why does it matter so much that I, that I really walk out and live out forgiven in my life? Why does it matter? I'm going to tell you why it matters. It matters because you have, you have, think about your hope. Just think about hope. Hope for the future. What does your hope for future look like? It doesn't look like it's supposed to look because it's held back because of a shell, because of a, a restraint, because of a chain that holds me back, won't let me go forward as, and, and be what I've really, God has really called me to be because I'm held back. I'm held back not by God. I'm held back by my inability to allow God to be God in my life. My hope, my source, the, my, my, my power. My power doesn't come uh, from, from a past experience. God is greater. I, I, love, I love David. I, 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 I love David. David, David went down to, to visit his brothers in the army, okay? He was just on a, on a, on a little errand from his dad, and he went down and, and he heard this, this giant whose name was Goliath. He said, he said, you know, and David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies the armies of God? Who is this guy? And, and everybody else was in fear. Not David. David was like, who is this guy? Who does he think he is? And, and David did not look to the giant as a problem. He looked to his past at what God had delivered him from. And then he ran towards the problem. And he didn't just kill the problem, knock it down. He didn't just knock down Goliath. He took his own sword, cut his own head off with his own sword, and he held the head up. I think it's gross when you think about it. Here's David holding up the head of the giant. But that's what, that's what it takes. That's what victory looks like. Victory looks like not knocking down stuff in your life, but 
going over to it, cutting its head off and taking it forward and saying, God delivered me from the, from the hand of this uncircumcised Philistine. He can deliver me from this. He, he's bigger than this thing. And see, see, that's what victory should look like in, a, in the life of a Christian. Someone who is saved and born again, delivered and set free, ought to be living like they're forgiven. Not, not, just, not just saying it. See, it's not words on a page that we read today. It's life-changing words. Amen? Amen. Events are life-changing, but the word is greater. Jesus is the word made flesh, by the way. Amen? He's the word made flesh. God can move. Let me just say it like this. God can move in your life to the degree that you have experienced forgiveness. I won't say it again, but, but that's why God isn't moving in your life. Amen? He's not moving in your life because you haven't experienced the full forgiveness of, uh, in your life, in your heart, in your mind, <laughs> in everything you got, in your relationships. Come on. In, in, in everything you got. Luke 7, there's a story. Luke 7, verses 40 through 43. I'll just breeze through to there real quick. It's, it says, and Jesus answered unto him and said, Simon, I have somewhat to say to thee. <laughs> I always like that verse. I highlight that verse in my Bible because, you know, sometimes I wonder, is, is Jesus speaking those same words to me? Pastor Everett, he, he maybe he's saying, yo, dummy, <laughs> I have someone to say unto thee. Yo, 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 listen to me. I have someone to say unto you. Because sometimes, you know, Jesus is speaking to us, but we don't hear his voice because we're not listening to his voice indeed. But he's speaking. He says, Simon, I have someone, someone to say unto thee. And he said, Master, he says, Master, say on. Okay, green light, here it comes. <laughs> and there was a certain creditor who had two debts. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, here's a question for you. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him the most? And Simon answered and said, I suppose he did whom the, to whom he forgave the most. And he said unto him, thou hast rightly judged. Good judgment, Peter. Many other people were sitting at the table that day, but there was only one woman at the feet of Jesus who was crying tears and washing, wiping him with, his, with her hair. There was only one woman there. And, and, and I think a lot of us come to church. We come to the table. We come, we come into the presence of God, and we leave out the same way we came in. We don't, we don't really experience the presence of God. We don't fully get what God is trying to do in our life. And you're only going to get there through forgiveness. Maybe we could just say that together. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. Thank you, Lord, for, for what you have done in my life. I am so grateful, God, to you. I owe my... to you. I owe to, I owe to you. I, 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 you know, I, one time when I uh, it was quite a while ago, I used to be a youth pastor, and there was a, uh, I had a service, and I had some kids in the room, and I had to l turn the lights down, and, you know, we had uh, actually had a lighter and uh, some candles and open flames in the church, and so I was hoping nobody would notice it, but I, and I had a plate underneath the candle, and I, I, uh, I had two candles, one that I lit and one that I didn't light, and I had somebody stand here in front, and I had them uh, run to the back and run to the back. We, we had a timer and a stopwatch, and we, so we timed how long it took for the person to get to the back of the church and back to the, back to the altar. And, uh, and, then, and then we lit the candle on the other one, and I said, okay, do the same thing. And, and he went that, halfway back, and it blew back out. So I said, if the candle blows out, you got to come back and relight the candle. And so yeah, I think it was the second trip or something that he finally did it. But did you know that he couldn't walk as fast back to the back and back to the altar because of the flame? That was in him. He was, he was, he was distracted. <laughs> the first guy had no distractions. He just went on and up and back. The, the second one had to go slower because of the flame that was inside. So he was, he was more conscious of the steps he was taking and of the wind and of the surroundings around him. So, you know, people, some people were trying to blow it out on the way by, you know, <laughs> trying to help, help, help their brother out. And, and, but, but, but the difference between running it back and forth, running to and fro, coming in and out of the church, is our ability to be conscious of the flame that is in us and that is in here. Amen? When we come together, our, our light gets brighter. 
You know, two, two candles come together is, I think, three times or ten times brighter. I think it's, it's, I think it's almost ten times brighter. Uh, two, two, just two. If two or three would, would agree is touching anything, greater things would happen in the world. And so if we became more conscious of the power in us, I only say because we're not a flame, okay? We're not a candle, but there is a light in us. We are the light of the world. We should, we should be more conscious of the light that's in us, amen? We should, we should walk more, well, there's another verse for that, Ephesians 5.15. It says, Paul uses this word, I won't read it all. It says, uh, Paul says, Ephesians 5, verse 15, he says, see then that you walk circumspectly. We don't really say that kind of word anymore, but you know what it means? Careful. Be cautious of the steps you take. Make sure that God is in the step. When you step forward into whatever it is God is calling you to, make sure that he's with you. Amen? He's going with me. Amen? Because see, now, now I'm not alone. Now I know that, that he's with me. Amen? I know that I can walk cautiously this morning. Amen? Uh, con conscious, not, uh, not, not of my sin. See, this is where we get it mixed up. We think that we got to be conscious that I'm a sinner. The answer to that question is not that I'm conscious of what I did. It's conscious of whose I am. I am forgiven. Say it with me again. I am forgiven. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. That gives me the power to walk. Amen? Power to walk. Amen? I can walk differently, but cautiously. Okay? All right? I want to know that when I step here, God is here. Amen? I want to know that when I come to this church building, that God is with me here. Amen? When we worship together, we're worshiping the same God. We're not worshiping different gods. There's only one real God, okay? There's a lot of gods, but I want to worship God. G, big G, God. The one who created heaven and earth. The one who spoke light out of darkness and put something inside of me. We just read that, right? He's, he's the God that, that spoke light out of darkness. He said, let there be light. There was no light. It was all dark, void, and no shape was around anything. He spoke that out. He spoke into existence. Pastor Everett, I stand here because he spoke me out of darkness. He created me. He positioned me perfectly. Amen? For this moment, I walk with gratefulness for the sacrifice for my freedom. I walk in love. Amen. I walk, I'm loved by God. I am loved by God. I am loved by God. I don't know why I can't sing this song. I am loved, okay? I just don't sing it. <laughs> I'm loved though, okay? I don't know. Maybe you can't sing or maybe you can't sing, but you're loved. Yeah. Amen. Walk like it. Yeah. I was driving home the other day and uh, I, was, I got behind the truck. I don't know what kind of truck it was. I don't, I don't know who, who it was, but it said, it, said, it was a, a, a semi, it was a box truck and it said, it said, it said, anywhere, anything, anytime. That's what it said. And I said to myself, I said, that's a message. That's a message. And it's not about delivering stuff, but maybe it is. Maybe I should be thinking anywhere, anytime. Come on. Maybe I should be thinking about I'm delivering something anywhere. Anytime, anything. I'm, I'm delivering something. And I, I just wonder if, 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 if we were Christians and we're delivering stuff to the world that so desperately needs an answer, what is the package that you're taking to them? See, most of us are doing nothing, nowhere, and never. And we're asking God to bless it. Most of us are confidently quiet about the gift that we have received. And it's bigger than us. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than me. Amen? We should be like a... I'm just going to go around a backwards compliment. We should be like an EF storm, okay? Like a hurricane, okay? Yeah. We should be like a... It, when I walk into the room, it should be a tornado. You know, last night we, I had my grandson and, uh, over at the house, and I was trying to study, and I was sitting there, and, uh, uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't uh, had a lot of time with my grandson, but last, last night he was there. And I'm telling you, he, he, I was in the room, I had the door shut, and pretty soon the door opened, the door shut, here he comes in there. He said, hey, what's up? And I said... <laughs> I said, what's up, man? He said, and he said, 
And he comes over and he, you know, kind of gives me a hug like this. And then, and off he goes. And, and I, I was like, I, I swear, I swear, I don't swear often, but uh, it was like, it was like, I actually don't swear at all. Hope, I hopefully don't. And, uh, and uh, it, was, it was not even uh, a minute, okay? And he had every, bed off, every cover off the bed. He had the sheets off the bed. I mean, to completely strip the bed, bed down, he had knocked down all the clothes uh, baskets in the room. And uh, he was over, he was, uh, he was trying to drive my, my lamp, which is uh, actually, it looks like a, a car. And he was over trying to drive my lamp off the uh, nightstand. And I was like, I was like, hey, what? you're a terrorist. <laughs> and so I've never seen somebody so quick <laughs> to tear something up. And he was having a blast. <laughs> I just, I, just, I just want you to know this. I wonder if just maybe we act like him. Tearing stuff up. Amen. Disrupting all the plans God has for our life because we're not listening and we're not walking forgiven. I guess this is a great question. Are you afraid to rise? Are you afraid to rise to the challenge that God has placed before you? Or are you just content to stay where you are? The choice is really not mine. I, I can't make that choice for you. I can't, I can't make you get hungry for the Word of God. I can't make you read your Bible. I can't make you pray. I can't make you come to church. I can't make you lift your hands and worship. It's not my job. My job is not to be uh, uh, the, the guy with the whip. <laughs> You know, don't wear your skirt like that. <laughs> Put your hair up. Don't, don't, that's not my job. My job is not to tell you what to do. My job is to deliver a message to you. That's what God called me to do. And, and, and so if I'm going to go with you, I, I can go with you because I'm on, online. You know, you can take the phone and I go home with you and I can keep preaching to you all the time if you need me to. But I want to say this. You must decide what you're going to do with what God has done for you. And only you can decide that. I cannot decide that. I, I'm not a micromanager. God didn't put me here to, to drive myself insane by, by everything that you do in your life and by everything you think. That's not my job. I'm not here for that reason. <sighs> I'm actually only 23 years old. I've been a pastor for a year. No, I'm just kidding. See these wrinkles? I was getting my hair cut the other day and the lady's holding up the mirror and I said, where did them wrinkles come from? And I said, I said, they're not there. That's what I said. They're not there. I said, but they weren't there when I, before I met Joanne, so maybe it's just from her. And so I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know where the wrinkles come from. I don't know where time goes. But I don't, I don't want to let another day go by. Another day go by that I don't walk in power. Amen? Amen? Amen. Transition comes into our life through the power of, that we place in the faith that we have in the gift that God gave us. That's when transition will happen. Everything will always be the same. I've always been broke. I guess I'll always be broke. The truth is, is that if you can learn a new trick, okay, you don't have to always be broke. You have to learn to do different with what you have been given. And then you will grow into something that you aren't already. Amen? 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 I've always, I've never had any friends. I guess I'll never have any friends. And the truth is, if we apply scripture, it says a friend shows himself friendly. Most of the reasons, most of the time, the reason we don't have friends is because we're not good at being friendly. Amen? You're right, Pastor Everett. But I'm not going to say Amen because that kind of hurts. <laughs> they will never change. They will never change. I want to say this right. They, anybody else in your life, will never change. You're right. Nobody else in your life will ever change your right in your own life. Nobody else will ever change your right in your own life. Nobody. 
because it's what we see with our own eyes. That, that, that's what affects real change in your life. What I see in my own life. What I, when I look in the mirror, what is it that I see in, in my own mirror? You know, in the bathroom in, in the morning, when you, when you shut the door and you're all by yourself, what is it that you see? It, it matters. It matters. It matters, because that's your perception of, uh, that, that, <laughs> that's the package you're taking to your world around you. That's the package you take. How you see the gifts that God has given you matters. Hebrews chapter 11, in verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What are you hoping for? What are you hoping for? Because you, you, you probably already have it. You probably already have it. A, a song I've been listening to a lot, it's called, called The Evidence, and it says, it says I see... <laughs> I can't sing today. I don't know why. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life. All over my life. I see your promises and your goodness, or however it goes. Okay, but there's evidence in our life already. Yeah. If we would study the evidence in, that's already exists in our life, we could answer some questions. Maybe we could sit together, wherever you are, okay? Maybe we could sit down. I, I wish I had a, a bed. I mean, I could lay down right here, and, and it, we could just talk, okay? What evidence are you presenting what, what, what is your thing? Uh, uh, Philippians chapter 2, I'm, I'm going to go quicker, okay? I promise. F Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 through 14, Paul talks about, he says in verse, verse 12, he says, uh, I, I'm not going to read all, of, all the verses, I don't have the time, but it's, it, Paul says, work out your own salvation. Work out your own salvation. Work out your own salvation. Did you know working out is always hard? Like, you got any, no, not, nobody wants to go to the gym. Some people do, but they're, they're, they're just weird. But other, most people, I, I drive by the gym every night on the way home from work, right on by it. But, but if I go work out, it's a struggle, right? So I don't go to the gym thinking I'm not going to struggle. I mean, some people do. Yeah, I don't know. They're, they're weird, too. But, but if you're there at the gym, you ought to work out, struggle, Okay? And so, so if life is a gym, okay, and you're struggling a little bit, work it out. Work it out. Work it out. I, 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 I don't even know how I can say this any, any, any better. Start working it out. Paul says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling is what he says. He said, he said, you got to, you got to, I, I mean, I don't know, I've been in some circumstances in my life, and I've been afraid. I, I sit at the table on this side, and there are eight or ten people on the other side, and they got all the power, they got all the power, and they, walk, they look at me, and they say, it's just you? That's when I had them, because I know they think I, I'm less than who God created me to be. God created me for this circumstance. He brought me to this moment, and you know what? He will deliver me from you. Amen? No matter what it is in your life, there's always going to be an obstacle. Don't let it be yourself. Don't let it be yourself. God has given you everything you need to be everything you need to be in the world around you. You are the gift for the moment. I don't know, maybe you should just do that with me every morning. Just look yourself straight in the eye and say, you know what, I'm a gift. I'm a gift. And I'm gifted. I'm gifted. I'm a gift and I'm gifted. Yeah. And then begin to use your gift. Begin to walk it out. Have confidence in what God did for you. Be forgiven. Okay. Sometimes, you know, we, get decide, we, can, we decide to get saved. You know, like, like this morning, we prayed a prayer and we got saved. And sometimes, you know, in the old days, we used to always have to walk the aisle. I don't know. You know, have to go walk down the aisle, and you had to go to the altar, and you had to stand in front of the altar. You know what? I think we should go back to old, old kind of days, you know, where you just feel this, uh, this, this necessary need to repent, and this necessary need to make it public in front of everybody and not be ashamed of it, and really just walk up to the altar and say, you know what? Pastor, I just want to give my heart to the Lord. Okay. 
That's what we're here for. I'm not here to, to preach condemnation to you or, or, or walk it. There's therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ, right? And yet we will have it. But we're not supposed to be living like that. But we should be, we should be this, this should be a great environment. The church should be a great environment where you can come and not be judged. <laughs> like we can decide to be healed from a past hurt or even forgive a past, for, a, a, a past offense. Like, like I can decide to walk down the, to the altar. I can show you scriptures that you didn't choose God. You, you didn't choose God. God chose you. I can give you scriptures like that, but you come forward, you make a decision, and you walk out and live like you didn't make a decision. Like we can decide to be healed from a past hurt. Like we can decide to forgive a past offense. Like we can decide. Okay. We don't seem to follow through with our decisions most of the time. Did you know that? Because we won't hold ourselves accountable. We won't hold ourselves accountable because we don't like accountability. So saying and doing are really just two different things, aren't they? Right? Right? <laughs> Working it out is a process. Working it out is a process. Working out your salvation is a process. This thought, this thought really makes me, makes me wonder. Do I, do I speak the word out from, from words that I have heard inside? Or do I speak out what I have heard from outside? Very, very, very good question, Pastor Everett. That's a good question. You know, it's the little things uh, in life. Uh, we celebrate all the big things, but we forget that there's the little things in life that, that, that really, life is made up of little things, really is. It, it, it's, it's like when we were, we were at uh, Thanksgiving and we were eating food, uh, the food can look good, but if it doesn't taste good, there's something wrong with it, right? It's the small little ingredients that go into the cake or the pie that make it good, Right? It can look good and not be good. That's what we have to get away from as Christians. We are forgiven or not. I want, I want, I, I want you to learn to live forgiven out into, into the world. Amen? Forgiveness. You know, I, I used to describe forgiveness as, as let me just, I'll, I'll read you what I wrote. It says, I, I used to describe forgiveness as one person laying down their life literally as a bridge for someone to walk across. That's how I used to describe forgiveness. But, but I think I'm wrong. Because it's not just me laying my life down or you laying your life down so someone can walk all over you. It's when you stand back up and begin to walk again. That's what the definition of forgiveness looks, is and looks like. It's, it's not being walked all over. It's standing up and walking again. You see, see, because you can't stand up and walk again like you've never been hurt because you haven't actually experienced forgiven inside of yourself. So I, I changed my opinion. Forgiveness, <laughs> it, it is really accountability and justice. Okay? But it's not us holding someone else hostage for what they did. Okay? It's us making sure that we're accountable to the one that we offended. We offended Jesus Christ. We, we needed a Savior. And if I really did need a Savior, if I really did offend Him, if I was really out of sorts with Him, and I really came back into a relationship with Him, the most important relationship, the first relationship in my life, the one that makes the most sense to me, all of this other stuff matters a little bit less. Paul talks in Romans chapter 4, and I'm, I'm running way out of time. I, I, could, I could talk for almost four hours today. Romans chapter 4, he's, uh, he talks about being imputed, uh, about righteousness being imputed. And he's talking about Abraham, and he's talking about uh, uh, the mark in the flesh, you know, circumcision, whether you're circumcised or not circumcised. And Paul said it doesn't matter if you've got marks in your flesh. It matters what's in your spirit. It matters the spirit that you have. And that's, that's in, it, that, that word imputed means it's a legal term. That means you're getting what you don't deserve. Someone else took your place. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's a transfer that happened there. The proof of the work in you 
is found in what works out of you. The proof of the work in you is found in what works out of you. Real forgiveness has no prejudice. Real forgiveness has no prejudice. Uh, and I, I, know, uh, I, I know that you know, maybe you want me to stop talking, but I can't yet, okay? The ability to not remember the past performance, instead free to be in the moment without malice. Peter says it like this. He says, he says therefore laying aside all malice and guile and hypocrisy and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes, Desire the sincere milk of the word. Jesus said it even better. He said, unless you be converted and become as a little child, <laughs> a little terrorist in your bedroom, <laughs> unless you become like that, like, like not worried about whether or not you were supposed to take the, the bed covers off or not, he didn't care. He was in my presence. I never said nothing to him about it. I just watched him because I thought it was hilarious. I could put the bed sheets back on. I can... I can, I can put all the baskets back up. There, there was nothing he was going to hurt in that room. I just loved the fact that he was in my presence and he was making a mess and he was having a blast and he was jumping on the bed and everything. And I was like, who is this guy? And, and, and that's, that's who we should be as little kids of, the, of an almighty God. Stop being weighed down by all the things you shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't do and start living out what he really created you to be. Be the gift. Amen. Be forgiven. Yeah. Go forward and, and, and don't take all that other stuff in your life. Don't take it with you and go, oh, I've, I've been hurt. I'm forgiven. Yeah. Amen. It says in verse 3 in, in Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, you go look it up, verse 1, verse 2, verse 3. Verse 3 says, if so be that you have tasted if you've tasted that the Lord is good, if he's gracious, if you've just tasted, if you have tasted of the power of forgiveness in your own life, start li <laughs> So based on your experience, this is what Peter's saying, I'm just, I'm paraphrasing. So based on your experience with Jesus, who laid down his life, got up and now offers you power to be a son, I lay down all malice and guile and hypocrisy and envy and all evil speakings. Can we say that together? See, based on my experience that I have received from him, if so be that you have tasted and seen that the Lord is gracious, if so be that you have tasted, uh, David says it, Psalm 34, I believe it is, he says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He's good or he isn't good. Is he really good? Is he the best? Or is that the best thing? It's so negative. I, I just can't let go of it. I just can't. I, I, and that's what we do. We, we struggle between what's good and what's best. And what, what, what the... I used to say it like this. Until you're willing to let go of something old, you can never, ever receive something new in your life. And that's a decision. And there's a process with every single decision. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Robert. How do I know I'm forgiven? Well, it is just not a, it's just a prayer away. Okay, Romans 10. Let me give some meat for that. Romans 10, verse 9 says, If thou wilt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in their, your heart that God raised, hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's a statement. There's no question mark. There's a period right there. There's a period there. That means the door closes, okay? Or all, 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 all intrepidation, all fear of, of rejection is gone because I am secure in my relationship with him. This is my decision, yes or no? It's your choice, yes or no? You have a choice to make. Psalms 103, verse 12 through 17, and this is really a lot of, a lot of reading, but I've got to show you the difference, okay? There's a, there's, a, there's a decision we make, but there's a decision that God makes, and I think it's important that I, that I show you the, the, the difference between the decisions, okay? Because there's a decision that I make, yes, 
And there's a decision that God makes. Yes, Psalms 103, verse 12 through 17, it says, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed my, our, our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. He, verse 14, and For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. Verse 15, For as a man, his days are as a grass, as the flower of the field, so he flourishes. Verse 16, For the wind passes over and it is gone, the place thereof shall not be, shall not know it anymore. I think it's, this is powerful. Okay, so my life, gone. Nobody's even going to know it was even here. But there's a decision I need to make. Verse 17, But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and is righteous unto children's children. Everlasting to everlasting. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our transgressions from us. He remembers that we're a frame. That, that he remembers our frame. He pity us like a father. He pity us like a father. Like, like a grandfather looking at a little son, little grandson, tearing his bed up. Okay? He says, <laughs> that's my boy. <laughs> that's my boy's boy right there. Woo, I got some expectations. He, 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 God makes a decision to forgive us, knowing our frame, knowing what, I always, I always, I always love this thought, whenever I come to the altar, or I get on my knees, or I, I drive in my car, and I say, Father, forgive me for my sin, <laughs> forgive me what I said just now, forgive me, uh, uh, forgive me of what I just thought, he, he's faithful and just to forgive us from all unrighteousness, just like I never sinned. Just like it. I am made new. That's his decision over me. Can I be forgiven and not act, and not act like it? Yep. Forgiveness comes from above. <laughs> this is so powerful. Forgiveness comes from above. It's a gift that I receive. It, it resides in my heart. It's lived out in my life. Forgiveness is never a destination. It's a decision. Forgiveness is not a destination. It's a decision. It, it looks just like your faith. Your faith is not a destination. It's a decision. Uh, uh, Hebrews 10, uh, 11 verse 10 says, Abraham says, he says, it says, it says, he went looking around for a city whose builder and maker was God. It wasn't a, a city, it wasn't a building he was looking for. Abraham showed us that it's in us. God is building something in us, with us, through us, to the world around us. Amen? It's, a, it's just like your faith, just like your faith. Your faith is a decision to choose Christ every moment. Every moment. Work out your own salvation. Every moment. Every minute. Every second. You know, sometimes when we're going through some big trials, we, we begin to look at the big trial. But the only way through the trial is the same way you got in it. Moment by moment. Give me the faith. Give me the courage, Lord, to go one more minute. Give me the faith, Lord. Give me the courage to go another minute. Uh, give me the faith and the courage, Lord, to, to say what you're trying to tell me to say. Give me the faith and courage, Lord, to listen and then to do what you've called me to do. Give me the faith and courage, Lord, just to, just to, just to take one more step. Just to go one more, one more, one more step. Just to try again. Just to, just to give it a one more attempt. Give it, give it one more try. For he looked for a city whose foundations, who, which hath a foundation, hath foundations, whose builder and maker. You know, we stand upon the shoulders of all of the people, the prophets and the teachers and the pro people that have gone before us. We stand on their shoulders today. I choose him like he chose me before the, he chose me before the foundation of the world, before anything was here. For any mountain, for any, 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 anything. He chose me then. 
I chose him. Amen. Do you want to do the math with me, though? Because the evidence in our life equals overflow. <laughs> there's two songs. I love both those songs. Living in the overflow. But there's evidence that gives you overflow. There's evidence that gives you overflow. Hmm. You know, my name is not Watson. And your name is not Sherlock. But we don't have to go very far to find the evidence. But you do have to look for it. And you do have to listen. What does forgiven look like? For me and in me and from me. I need to look at what, it, what has been given to me. Amen? That's not too late. Yeah. We, we, we still have life. <sighs> Take a breath. Go ahead. <sighs> it's not too late not a moment too late today's the day of your salvation god is the god of now amen you're here ah maybe you have some regret or shame listen to the voice that you're listening to stop listening to some of the voices that you are listening to begin to listen to his voice do what he says walk around like you're a blessing amen you're blessed you're blessed be grateful for all that God has given you. He's given you a lot. Be grateful for it. Act like. Be forgiven. And then give that away. Amen? You know, yesterday I was uh, reminded of a Bible. We have Bible study. Saturday morning at 10 a.m. And I want to invite you. It's a really powerful time in the Word of God. And I was uh, just, I was standing in the back and in the middle of the service, I was reminded of this uh, situation that happened. And uh, there was, I, I got a phone call one day and uh, someone was just crying and, and uh, the, uh, they had just walked into a home and someone they knew and they had shot themselves when they walked in. And they called me right, right away and, and uh, was talking to me about, oh, why would this do that? Why would, you know, and we have questions, okay? They, they had questions. and. Those, those answers to those questions are not things that we can answer immediately, okay? Sometimes it takes a process of time to maybe fully understand or a process or to be able to fully, you know, get it to get to a point where you, you can just accept the outcome of what ha somebody else's decision. And I, when, when the person hung the phone up, I, I wrote this down and I, I, I read it yesterday and uh, there was someone here that it really touched, actually touched a couple of people that were here yesterday and I want to read it to you. It's called the great transfer. And what happens in our life is we are constantly transferring something to someone. We're, we're attempting to transfer our pain onto someone else. And that, that, uh, you can see it in relationships all the time. Someone will see somebody across the room and they're like, hey, you know, and then they're like, hey. And then, and then when they come together, uh, often the one will put their arms around the other and just hang on that other person, expecting that person to solve a need that's in them. them. And it, it happens both ways. So, uh, so we have the, this, these transfers that are going on in our life. And if we really can, can begin to see that in our life, we would begin to really just, I'm only saying this because I want you to think about how it is you're living your life, how it is you're walking your, your relation, out, out this door into your relationships, whether, whether with your money or with a person or even with your past or with your future. And so I, I don't want you to think that uh, if certain things begin to happen, then I'll be happy because that's, that's an actual lie. And you will never actually get to the place where you're going to be happy because you're always going to be chasing something that's never going to happen because you're trying to transfer uh, uh, your perception of what good is or what great is or, or where you'll find security uh, onto a future, uh, a future moving target that's never going to happen. Or you hang everything on your past and say, I'll never be happy, I'll never change because I've always, this, this is not that happened. We have a list of things that have happened to us and, and we can never be fully whole or, or healed unless we really acknowledge that our, 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 our transfer, the great transfer happens only when we get we, when we get a download from heaven. And so I wrote this and it says, uh, we often surround ourselves with friends, with similar battles, similar, similar likes and dislikes. I wrote this right after I hung the phone up. The Lord gave this to me and it's very powerful. 
it's so powerful that it has really affected me in my life, in my walk, with, with others and with God. So, so we often surround ourselves with friends with similar battles, similar likes and dislikes. Sometimes our friends are only there for the purpose of company and our pain. Sharing occurs. But if I look to my friends for advice or change, I will just look just like them. Occasionally, we are fortunate enough, hopefully we have a church, hopefully you have a church to go to, hopefully you can come to a, a body of believers who believe the word of God. You need to seek out a church who will preach the truth to you. You need to seek out a, a, a true mentor. I'm not talking about a, a, a pastor, okay? That, because we, we have a, a tendency in society to elevate people to, to, to platforms that they don't deserve. We hold, them, we hold them at high regard and they don't deserve that regard. But we need to find a, a body of, of people, of believers, true Christians. Amen? We're, occasionally, we've we got to seek out mentors. Just, let me just say this. You can, a mentor will never seek you out. They're too busy. You have to seek out a mentor. You've got you to look at the five closest people in your life, and you've got you to look at them and go, eh, I don't I'm, ooh, ooh, ooh. You know? You got to say, you know what? I don't know. Maybe I got to find five different people. And you got to go look for them. You got to be a friend. You got to go there not looking for, not looking to not looking to for them to like you. Go there looking for them to speak truth to you, okay? So that you can be changed. Yeah. Cuz that's what a mentor will do. He'll tell you the truth. And you're not going to like it. That's my expectation. Okay? Oh, Pastor Everett, you don't know what you're talking about. Yes, I do know what I'm talking about. I went every year, every year, every, every week for five years and sat with someone who told me I didn't want to hear. Every, every week. Held me accountable. Every week. I had to, I had to learn how to, to, to do stuff I didn't know how to do before because I had to do it. I had to do the work. Well, you know, Pastor Ever, you don't, don't understand. I know what it's like to sit in my office for a year and cry and not have answers. I know what it's like. Occasionally, we're fortunate enough to find a, a friend that is greater than us, someone who will take us under their wing, teach us their wisdom, show us how to be better. We are able to trade with them our inexperience for their experience. If I look to a, to a person, though, the best I can ever hope for is to look like them, right? I can, I can look just like them. I, but if I look to my past for the answer, I will just repeat. You ever heard that saying, history repeats itself? You ever hear that? You know, I want, <laughs> I'll turn and look this way. How many, how many relationships have you been in they all look the same? It's the other people's fault, Right? There was a great transfer that occurred one day. A friend of mine went all the way through death, death on the cross, taking in his body all the ugliness of my sin. Oh, what a friend I have in him. What a great transfer occurs every time I come to talk with him. But if I looked to God for my answer, the only thing that will ever happen is transformation. 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 I trade sorrow for joy, guilt for peace, shame. It's all gone. I feel worthless, but he gives me value. I feel unloved. He reminds me of his great love. We are all attempting to rid ourselves of pain in life by the same method of transfer. It may look like pills, a bottle of person, work, or money. But Jesus embodies the great transfer for all of us, our insecurity for, for security. If you would just stand with me wherever you are in this moment, I just want to pray for you. And we prayed already at the beginning of service to receive the Lord. But I want to I do it again. 
And I want to add a little something to it, okay? Because I believe that God wants to touch your life right now, wherever you are. And so let's just pray together. Father, we thank you right now for this moment. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the sacrifice that you made for us. We thank you that your thoughts are not like our thoughts, that your ways are not like our ways. And Father, we, we ask you, fresh and new, God, to come and touch us right now from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. Lord, that we would no longer walk out of this place, out into the next bedroom, out into, the, into whatever relationships that we have in our life, that we would not walk into those relationships with the expectation that they're going to fix us. Lord, I pray that you open our minds, that we become aware of what we do and how we do it and why we do it. Help us, Lord, to make better decisions. Father, James says that all wisdom comes from above. And it's peaceable and easy to be entreated. That means we don't have to have a, a college degree to understand what you're saying. But Lord, we just, I just pray you open our ears and our heart to understand what you're saying. And we're just asking right now, God, give us wisdom. Give us wisdom. And Father, help us to, to not just, not, it's not good enough for us to know what to do, but help us to have the courage, Lord, to do what we're supposed to do. That we would be doers of the word and not just a hearer only. That we would begin to have boldness in our own life. That we can let down things, let go of things, malice and hypocrisy and envy and jealousy. That we can let go of all of those things, Father, and that we could understand that you are enough. You're enough for me. I got the best thing. <laughs> I got the best thing. But I found you. Help us, Lord, that from this moment forward, we would not be bound by yesterday, by expectations of, of futures that will never happen, but that we would be, that we, we would just understand that we're loved. Loved enough to be forgiven. My God loves me enough to forgive me. He transferred forgiveness into my life. Love, real love is in my life. And I thank you, Lord, that I never have to go another minute of another day absent from that love. I thank you, Lord, that you're with me and that you're for me, and that your hand is over my life and in my life. I thank you, Lord, that we can walk indeed out into the world because indeed we are your kids. We are your children. And whatever is going to come our way, <laughs> what does it say, Jeremiah? Oh, earth, earth, earth. Hear the word of the Lord. That's my child. Get out of the way, earth. Get out of the way, earth. Get out of the way, circumstance. Get out of the way, bad thoughts. Get out of the way, mindsets. Get out of the way, strongholds. We take authority over all those things in Jesus' name and we pull them down right now. We break the back of the enemy today. No more will we think less than what we're supposed to think of ourselves. But we will live forgiven today. From this day forward, we will be forgiven in our heart. And I, Lord, I just thank you right now. I, I, feel, I feel things have broken right now. I thank you, Lord. That maybe today is the first day that we walk free. But Lord, we walk free indeed because we are forgiven. 
because we are forgiven. And we thank you, Lord, for this. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Can you say amen with me? That means it is done. Let's give him some praise. Come on. <laughs> One little thing, homework, okay? Go to the mirror. Look in the mirror and say, I am forgiven. And then celebrate that, okay? <laughs> celebrate. Amen? I'm forgiven. And see if, see if that smile don't come back. Amen? See if that joy don't rise in your heart. Amen? God is good. Amen? Amen. Amen.